Now, I want to look at old tech stocks, please. Look at this. IBM, Intel, Cisco. Uh, our next guest says that's where you should put your money. Old tech, not new tech. He's here, David Banson. He is the CIO of the Banson Group of High Tower Advisors. Okay. So, you like IBM, you like Intel, you like Cisco, you like old tech. Why? It's a valuation issue relative to new tech. We like free cash flow. We like the value that's there currently. If we think we're going to get a lot of growth in the economy, interest rates go higher, there's inflation, that's discounting the value in the future of these very high valuation cool tech is the word we like to use. Yeah, the new, the new big techs, like the Microsofts, the Apples, Googles, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I would, I would more even say, though, see, Microsoft, the balance sheet there is phenomenal. The cash flow there is phenomenal. I'm more looking at your NVIDIAs, your, your Netflix, your Amazons that are great companies, but we just think from an investor standpoint, very expensive. We can get a more defensive play as we rotate to value out of so old tech. I'm, I'm more safe. IBM, no Intel, question. I'm safe. Safer. I'm taking a flyer if I look at Amazon and the rest of them. Okay, got it. Now, I've got an economist, a bunch of uh, several economists uh, in the Wall Street Journal. They're saying that the growth in the economy and the strong, uh, market rally is because of Trump. Mm -hmm. Would you take issue with that? I, I would not. I, I think that, uh, first of all, all presidents get too much credit when the markets are good and too much blame when they're bad. Certainly, anyone denying right now that this last leg of market increase is very heavily around tax reform and a lot of Trumpian policy is in complete denial. There's no question that a significant part of this market move is relative to the deregulation efforts of the Trump administration, uh, 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 increase in confidence in the business sector that started around the time he was elected. But I do believe that there's some element of global growth that is played in. You, I wouldn't give 100 percent of the credit. The, the problem I have is I hear time and time again on people on different networks say, well, look, the Obama market was up more the first year than the Trump market. It isn't true. No, it's not. They're starting at the date of inauguration, not the election, which is the most disingenuous thing I've ever heard for anyone who knows how markets work. The market was down 500 points the day after President Obama was elected. The market was up 500 points the day after President Trump was elected. It went down 2,000 points between Obama's election and inauguration. Now, granted, we were in a financial crisis. Sure. There was a lot going on. Sure. But my point is the market was up 6 percent in President Obama's first year from election to election. It was up 28 percent, President Trump. It's, it's not even close. Before I close it out, we're up 150 points now, 25,723. How much more room to go on the upside is there? Um, there, there it's going to be more selective. That's part of this old tech versus new tech dichotomy. I would start taking money out of the very expensive things that are frothy. Now, that doesn't mean they're out of top. It just means risk management is important. But, 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 but the Dow can get to 26. Maybe oh, 27? Oh, of course, of course. It's a few hundred points away. It could be there Monday. 27? Um, at that point, it starts getting a little expensive uh, on a PE basis. You'd have to be more careful. We're in the I would be very bottom up, very selective right now. This is an active manager's market. All right, David, thanks very much for joining us this Great morning. Great to be with you. <laughs> on a day like this. Yeah.